I'm going to start by asking you all a question. How many times have you thought about food today? And were those thoughts happy thoughts? I'm Jolene Cox, award-winning cookbook author, recipe developer, founder of the Family Food Made Easy program, soon to be um, 40 next week. I know, shocking, shocking, I know. But it has actually taken me nearly all of those 40 years to learn the lesson I want to share with you today. And that is the secret to having a healthy relationship with food. Now, growing up, like a lot of women or a lot of us, I had a very, very turbulent love-hate relationship with food. I loved the experience of eating, yeah. I just hated the way it made me feel afterwards. I loved the taste, igniting all the senses, up until that very last bite. And then there would be a dark cloud of guilt with mixed signals of feeling full, which in turn would make me feel fat, with a repetitive voice in my head saying, next time actually refuse. And then I'd say, next time I'm gonna try harder. Because of, I'm going to call it, my family genetic lottery, I would have been one of those wee kind of chubby kids in primary school. And it wouldn't have been until I was in my teens, I kind of copped and realized that it made me stand out for all of the wrong reasons. So, at the tender age of 14, I went on my very first diet. And so it began, that cycle of excessive dieting, followed by excessive eating, on and on. I look back now and the answer is actually screaming at me. I wish I could get that wee 14-year-old girl and either give her a good shake or just give her a good hug. But it took me almost 20 years later to figure it out. It wasn't until I was in my 30s and I was pregnant with my daughter, I read a quote that really resonated with me. It was, the greatest gift you can give your child is to heal your own relationship with food. So I thought, I'm going to have to sort this out or I'm going to pass my crap on to her. So I read books upon books. I researched, I studied about health, diet and nutrition. Well, <laughs> that's a minefield, isn't it? Do you know how many mixed messages we're bombarded with every day about food and diet and nutrition? I'll give you a few examples that we know well of. Eat five a day. Ah, oh, no, hang on, actually, um, eat seven a day. Um, fruit has a natural occurring sugar, so cut that down, maybe don't eat so much of that. Eggs are a great source of protein. Don't eat too many eggs. And my favorite one of all is, fat is bad unless it's a good fat and then it's good. <laughs> Like, how confusing is that? As a cookbook author of Family Food, I get so many emails every week from worried parents wanting to feed their families well. And they have two main concerns. One is the picky eater, and the other is childhood obesity. And as parents, the way we deal with these two biggest fears can actually lead to obesity. I'll start with the picky eater. Now, this is a wee bit of a tongue twister, so. The way we deal with the picky eater, we can get so obsessed with them actually eating, we don't even listen to the child telling us they're full. As mothers, from the beginning of time, we are obsessed with clean plates. Like, don't leave that table until you've eaten everything on that plate. How many? We've all said it. And then another one is, um, Eat one more spoonful. And what, we do, what do we do with that one more spoon? We pile it so high and we shovel it into the child's mouth, not even listening to them saying, I'm full, mommy, I'm full. Which in turn leads to overeating, which in turn can lead to obesity. And then it's how we deal with obesity. We restrict food, 
We cut out goodies and treats and snacks. And you know, once something is restricted, my God, does that become more desirable? I have been at kids' birthday parties and the children hoovering up the treats of the floor are the kids that have actually been restricted. It's because it becomes more desirable. And then they binge when they get access to these type of foods, which in turn, binge eating can also lead to obesity. So I started by asking you, how many times did you think about food today? And how many of those thoughts were happy thoughts? Do you know we think about food more often than our favorite TV show? We think about food more often than our hobbies and interests. We think about food more often than how popular we are on social media. Studies actually prove that we think about food for one hour, 39 minutes every day. And how many of those thoughts are happy? Or how many times do we let that little negative voice creep in without even realizing it? I'll give you an example of a scenario. It's Friday night, movie night, the bottle of wine is open. We're gonna forget the stresses and the strains and the worries of the week. Big, huge share bag of crisps on the table, followed by nuts, the PDs are on. This is our happy, comfy, cozy place. How many of you in that scenario have said to yourself, Jesus, why can I not stop eating? I ah, know, sure, I'll have one more. <laughs> oh my God, I just can't stop eating these crisps. And we'll finish with, uh, will, will you take them away from me? Because I just can't <laughs> stop eating them. And we pass the responsibility on to somebody else. Instead of just living in the moment and enjoying our few treats and goodies, you know, just to allow ourselves to have that, we let that little negative voice creep in to our happy place. So what is it that I've learned? What is the secret to having a healthy relationship with food? Number one, don't label food as good or bad. Like everything in excess is not good in this world. Number two, learn to cook with fresh ingredients and teach your children how to cook. This is gonna be the greatest gift we pass on to them. Number three, listen to your belly. When it rumbles, eat. When you're full, stop. Remember guys, that number on the scales doesn't measure self-worth. And the next time you have your food for thought, make them happy thoughts.